Hello, this is Lolly. I have a project share today, uh, and that is a little miniature. Let's see if I bring this up here. It's a mini envelope with a little card in it, and the whole thing is laminated, and I made it into a charm. So what happened was I had another crafty dream last night, and I just kept dreaming about laminating these mini envelopes. So um, if you would like to know how to make these, uh, I will stay tuned, and I will give you the tutorial. And also, um, I will show you all the other ones that I made in the process. So I have uh, several in this paper collection. And um, a lot of the paper is from this, which is Echo Park For the Record by Lori Whitlock. I use a lot of that. It's a lot easier to use um, six-inch paper pads for these because the, uh, the designs and the patterns in these pads are smaller. And so, therefore, they... They just work a lot better for the mini envelopes. Okay, stay tuned. Hi, so the first thing I want to do is to make uh, several mini envelopes. And I've decided what I want is the one to make the one and a half inch square card. So I need cardstock or paper at two and three quarter inch square. And I need to score that at one and three eighths. So let me find my one and three eighths. I have a glare here. One and three eighths. And I will give you a link below to using this uh, envelope, mini envelope punch board so that you can see again exactly what I'm doing. And then you're going to want to make sure that you really burnish these flaps well. I need two on the side and one on the bottom. I like to hold that shut and then go ahead over here and round the um, other corner off. I'm not going to fold this one over because I need this one to be stiff, but I still want the fold across there to look more like an envelope. Okay, now I have pre-made a lot of these. I think I have 16 of them all together. So varying colors. I wanted to have enough so that when I fill my laminator, you know, they'll, we'll see how many I have when I uh, put them in a laminating sheet. So let me get a laminating sheet. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and run these through the laminator starting with the folded end. Okay, I got all of these laminated and just kind of roughly cut out around them. Now the thing with uh, laminating such thick cardstock is you tend to get a big air bubble around it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit and help you see what I'm talking about. Um, this one came out pretty good, but oftentimes there's a, a huge air bubble between the paper and where the uh, lamination is connected. And so I did try one that's just plain um, decorative paper instead of cardstock, but I think for my purposes, um, I really need the cardstock because I need that big air bubble here, and I'll show you why. I'm going to use a craft blade to cut. The opening back up to the envelope and I want to be very careful not to cut all the way through the back and I think that will be easier on the cardstock because the layers are more separated than on this uh, just decorative paper one so let's get one of these cut out this one's still got a lot of air bubble around it I'm gonna round that tip off okay let's lay this down so again, I just want to cut in that air bubble and open this back up. I'm just going to be a little careful here. Let me get this, see how sharp my blade is. It's not too sharp. I probably need to trade for another one. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. It did pretty well. So now I can actually open that up and I can put something in it, such as a little note 
and the envelope was made to hold a one and a half inch square um, piece of paper. So let's see how well that's going to do. We may need to make it a little bit smaller. Just because of the lamination here. Let's see how this works. Oh, that's it right there. So let's try that. I should have gotten cardstock instead of flimsy paper. Yeah, I would think a little bit smaller just because of the fact that the lamination is on the sides there. That would fit in there. Okay, so now let's pull back out. So what I need to do is um, I'm going to prep a couple of these, get them cut out, and get this slit back open. And um, then we can proceed from there to kind of decorate and put a little card and make this into a dangle. But I also want to say you don't even really need to laminate these because they are cardstock and you can just go ahead and decorate and punch the hole. I just thought for something, if you want to hang this on a purse, for instance, instead of just hanging it on a craft supply, you know, like a paper crafting project, you would want to have the extra um, strength of the lamination. So that's just my thinking on that. So let me get some of these prepped. Alrighty, I got um, all these prepped and what I did was I punched out some paper flowers from the same paper collection as these four here and instead of doing all these on camera I thought I would just kind of give you an idea of what I'm trying to accomplish here. So the first thing I want to do is poke um, holes or punch holes in the tops here. Now, as I always say, I'm making this up as I go along, so I'm sorry for that glare. So what I'm thinking is about taking one of these and adding a flower to it, but I want it popped up, so I'm going to do this, but I think I need a little extra than just this stickiness, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of the Better Ultimate Adhesive here. Boy, I didn't get a chance. I had to put that down exactly where uh, where it wanted to land there. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of this on top too. Again, it just needs a small amount. And I'm going to sort through some of these buttons here and see if I find something that I like. Ooh, definitely like that one. There you go. And now what I did was I made this so it's little... Um, smaller than one and a half inch but you can see how you can put a little note on there in this and give it to someone like this as a charm it would be really cute or to hang it on uh, one of the projects that you make so I'm trying to think. I want the floral on this one set these aside to dry Now these buttons I actually got from, um, they are, what do you call it? They are Stampin' Up! buttons, but I got them uh, from a craft store that sells um, gently used crafting supplies. I'm going to let those dry. Now with the Better Ultimate Adhesive, you need to wait uh, and not move them for about an hour. And then um, we're going to put the little chains or ribbons or whatever we're going to think of up in, in the top there through the holes. Oh, these are really cute. Let me get these off of here and show you what we have so far. I'm moving them. I'm just not moving the flowers here.
These would be great for birthdays, you know, for any kind of holiday. Just a gift of friendship would be very, very sweet. Okay, I have all of these done, but I want to zoom in and sh give you a closer look at them now. Try to get the uh, glare off of there. So this one, I just tied a narrow ribbon on it, and you can see I have a card in each one of these. This one, I did the loop with the ribbon there. This one, the ribbon was a little thicker, so I just pushed it through, and then I just kind of used some um, Fabri-Tac there to secure it. This one, I put a ball chain through there and then tied a little organza ribbon through that just to make it a little cuter. Um, so most of the eyelets of this size will hold a standard ball chain. Um, if you have a larger ball chain, you might want to use the larger hole and larger eyelet. Just use organza in a loop through there. Another ribbon, and this one, again, I just glued that, and then another ribbon in a loop. So here they all are. I think these are so fun, and I think they'll make great gifts for people. Again, you don't have to laminate, so you could just do it in cardstock. I just thought these would be a little more durable, you know, for, again, if you want to hang it on a a purse or um, even a, a planner or a notebook, you know, with a little chain like that would be really adorable. Thank you so much for watching.